Today, we return to the show where the in-universe producers are literal disguised demons and the in-universe cast are literal playthings, total drama. This time we're looking at a location, not a character. We're talking about the most haunted island in all of Muskoka, Boney Island. I've been perplexed by this mysterious island ever since first viewing in 2007, because it seems to be cursed, does it not? It permeates anything on it with bad luck, it has significantly hostile wildlife, and it seems to have some sort of Native American history to it, given the mysterious tiki statue that Beth found. At this point in my total drama theorizing journey, if you've been following, you know this is just going to devolve into why the producers are behind it, but trust me, you have no idea how deep this is about to go. So let's get into it, shall we? Hello, I'm the Theorizer, and I'm trying to make a few more theories right now. I've been slowed down for about half a year because of those pesky health issues, and unfortunately it came right in the middle of my more experimental theorizing, but even though I'm slightly dazed and disoriented from the ordeal, I can still do this. I mean, it's Boney Island, I've had almost 14 years to figure it out. We should be good. Let's start with the usual and scan its appearances, then stitch together its history. We are first introduced to Boney Island in Season 1, Episode 8, where the contestants canoe there for a challenge. The rocks are all sharp and severe looking, a thick fog densely encircles the island, and there's a massive skull-shaped rock up front. There are skulls on spikes all throughout the dark and dreary landscape, and aggressive carnivorous woolly beavers that shred down all of the already dead trees. We also find a bear on the island, as well as Stymphalian Canadian geese. There's quicksand there too, but we get our first clue that Boney Island is all by design, in that Chris literally does the one thing he rarely ever does, a confessional, just to explain that he personally set up the quicksand trap. Beth finds a tiki statue hidden in the bushes and steals it. They try building a fire and Izzy creates a borderline illegal fire starter which causes a huge explosion. For more on Izzy, see her theories, of course. Utter insanity. They flee the island and return to Wawanaqua. The statue presumably curses the team, and for an impressive streak, they do fail. Eventually her theft is revealed and she tries flushing the statue and is eliminated from the show. Later in the season, a challenge centers around returning the pieces to a cave on Boney Island because apparently she broke it up when she flushed it, and the curse needs to be fully lifted. There are more encounters with aggressive wildlife, but also a bit of inconsistency regarding the statue, which leads me to believe once again that this is obviously just the producer setting up another challenge. When we return to the island in Season 4, Lindsay is brought on as a guest judge for a fashion show, and Sasquatchanaqua kidnaps her, fleeing to Boney Island. We discover that while the main island was being used as a toxic waste dump, Chris was trying to convert Boney Island into a personal resort. Chris says the health department deemed it unfit for human life, yet scaffolding is everywhere because he brought in construction workers anyways, and they were all eaten by the woolly beavers. They do the challenge, but Lindsay is left there with the beavers to presumably be mauled. Considering the significant decrease in her functioning during All Stars, I think they damaged her pretty hard. It's the only time we see her until All Stars, and she forgets the difference between pushing and pulling when we next find her. Speaking of All Stars, Boney Island is a main focus this season, as each night a contestant from the winning team is exiled there. There's also a hidden immunity object there, and a whole episode takes place there as well. A challenge involving all of the mutants from Season 4. First, lightning goes there and catches a fish, then Sam goes there and is shredded by wildlife, then Cameron witnesses grisly urination, then Scott goes there hunting for the statue twice. But then it's the important episode. In episode 6, everyone goes to a special containment site on Boney Island dubbed the Fun Zone. This is where Chris or the government has trapped all of the mutant animals from season 4, and the invincibility statue is hidden here as well. But we'll use all that later. At the end of the episode, Mal is exiled to Boney Island. Overnight, all of the otherwise hostile wildlife is vehemently repelled by Mal, as you might expect. Next episode, it's Alejandro who persuades and pits the animals against one another. Nobody seems to go in the merge episode, but then in the 100th episode special, Alejandro goes once again, then finally Gwen goes in the last episode where they do it. Apparently a woolly beaver tried eating her, not surprised. Finally, you may have missed it, Ezekiel finds his way to the fun zone after the 100th episode special where he presumably finds his happiness amidst other mutants. 
Wamanakwa sinks in the All-Stars finale, but Boney Island likely remains and to this day contains horrors known and unknown, just waiting to be solved. So clearly the producers own Boney Island, right? Well, they certainly have control over it. What's our evidence for this? Chris placing the quicksand, building a resort, quarantining the fun zone, etc. It's not some mystery isle, it's quite clearly all a part of the competition. We know Chris has the authority and ability to purchase these islands because he bought Wawanaqua and bankrupted its mines almost instantly. We know this. With that said, its past is still quite shrouded in questions. It could be just another random island that the producers terraformed and generated a thick history for, given the Skull Rock and the likelihood that the Tiki could have just been placed by them. But there's also the fact that we know with utter certainty at this point that supernatural things do exist in this world. Aliens, ghosts, weird moon, psychologically impossible scenarios. That last one is a core of my theorizing. Another point to highlight is that the health administrations deemed it unfit for human life, but Chris neglected this. I think that Boney Island was staged. But I also think that there's more to the story, and it's something that I've hinted at now in my Scarlet Theory and my Beverly Theory. We've done a three-parter on the sheer depth of Chris and the producer's interference, and how Chris is a cold-blooded psychopath with only Chef as his militaristic restraint. But Boney Island isn't the only supernatural phenomenon in this inland archipelago. There's a blue harvest moon that inverts the food chain, but it also affects Mal, who is a borderline supernatural phenomenon given how radically extreme and specific Mike's version of his condition actually is. Ezekiel, the mutations, the moon, Boney Island, this whole area is embedded in a thick evil. I would put it all on the producers, and I am putting it all on the producers, but the streak of bad luck after Beth's statue theft comes down to more than just what they're capable of doing in a human sense. The bad luck mainly comes down to the episode where they make Chris a three-course meal. The sheer number of things that occur befuddles me. Owen's bee stings. I guarantee they planted the nest there because they know Owen's allergic because as Noah says when he very first arrives, someone gets the memos on everyone's life-threatening allergies. This is easy to plant, but sort of difficult to control beyond that. Owen's allergic confusion is probably what led him to missing Trent's arms and concussing him with the crate of oranges he threw, which is another notable quote unlucky event of the episode. Oh, and let's not forget that Lashana is allergic to pineapples, and in this very episode she is tasked with pineapple duty. Who does that? Heather, the producer's pet. As of the previous episode, Beth was finally pitted against Heather, and now she's rendered redundant, which is why this is the episode where she locks their head chef in the fridge, and her tiki statue triggers an unfortunate series of unlucky incidents that get her voted off. It's all staged. Literally. Everything. But on a larger scale, the series as a whole requires so many perfect coincidences to go exactly the way the producers need it to, and we know from my past theories that this is positively the case. I could go on all day with examples, but you've heard me go on all day already if you've binged the other videos. Every little bit of evil in this show connects to every other little bit of evil. The moon affects Mal. The mutants affect Ezekiel. Boney Island fears Mal. Boney Island is made home for the mutants. Wawanaqua is embedded in a thick state of malice, and the producers are at its core. We never see the producers, only Chris. And Chris is pure evil. He's demonic, and he even gets arrested for his crimes against humanity. It's only brief, though, and it's because of the same reason he knows the generals from Area 51. It's because the producers are something else. All of the characters are stereotypes to their core. All of the challenges are horrific experiments in human torture. All of the characters are tied to Wawanaqua and Chris, and they keep coming back. They are trapped, and we're stuck here since before they even arrived. We see things that we shouldn't be capable of seeing, like flashes into Mike's subconscious. Boney Island is unfit for human life, but Chris tried making it his home. It's the most haunted island there is. The contracts are constantly referenced, and everything is a trap. Yet despite their aggravation at the situation, the contestants still act like they're supposed to be there. I've been hinting at this for years, now let me be frank. These people have sold their souls, and they are living in hell, which has been summoned in Muskoka. 
This is a world where hell is televised for the consumption of fans, and everyone is aware of this except us. The logistical ramifications of this are staggering, so give me a couple videos. I also want to highlight that this theory of mine does not remotely invalidate the events of the show. It's not some dream theory metaphor. It's literal hell on Earth. Total Drama Island is a portal to hell, and we know this because the government is so hyper-focused on this show's business and the mutations are literal monsters. Chris's first action upon his arrival to Wawanakwa was draining the mine, which is the first thing the producers would find upon their ascension from the depths. And get this, we know that the mine has a direct link to Boney Island, the adjacent gateway, because Ezekiel literally digs from there to there. Wawanakwa sinks to Dia's Ray amidst the apocalyptic collapse of a critical gateway. Give me time, that's all I ask. We've moved into the next phase of these total drama theories, and I'm still, as you can maybe hear, a little dazed from my health, so I need time to rewatch the entire series with this lens and sort the holes and the logistics. And whether Chris is the devil, or just a petty fanatic who summoned all of this, it's pretty bold to call it THE Hell, but whatever's going on here is supernatural in nature, and involves a lot of parallels that are easier to just state as such. I need more time to sort through the legends surrounding Boney Island and what it means for the rest of the series, but this whole thing is certainly on an interesting track. Not one single character gets a truly happy ending. They're all miserable. Courtney's arc ends horrifically and just blows up in the show's face. It's not poor writing. This show is hell. There's no satisfaction or joy at the end of this road. All of the contestants fly into the sun at the end of All Stars. They burn eternal. Redonculus Race is adjacent too, but is more... almost... purgatorial. If this is not literal, then the metaphor should be painstakingly obvious. The whole series is basically mimicking hell. There's no doubt about this, with the soul-selling contracts, the torture experiments, the unhappy endings, and Chris himself. So even if I somehow can't prove it literally, the sheer amount of references to this insanity is something I'll find upon sifting through the show. Upon quickly checking now online, there seem to have been recently a couple of people who've gotten around to noticing these rather obvious parallels as well, with all stars in Pakateo Island mainly, but I've been at this for two and a half years now, and this isn't just some cop-out, it isn't just some metaphor, and it isn't some weird, I guess, subliminal real-life conspiracy. I'm saying it's literal, and has been like this since day f***ing one. I'm embedding it into the show's lore, whether it's true or not, because I want to see just how much evidence there really is for this. So subscribe. This will be fun. I will get to working immediately on a full series sweep and episode-by-episode -episode evidential sift. To my utter thrill, Total Drama was in fact renewed. Main series entry, like two new seasons were ordered. If you weren't aware of that fact, you're quite welcome. Thus, I leave you with one last idea. The interns are slaves that the government lets him get away with because he's a threat, and I wouldn't put it past the Boney Island spiked skulls to be more interns. Chris sends his sacrifices here, like the construction workers. What devastation. In short, if the producers are literal hell spawns, then Boney Island is a portal to hell. If they're metaphorical hell spawns, then Boney Island is staged by them anyways. This theory is a win-win, but we're going deep now. The mine is a spot we shall investigate as well, given its importance here. But until the next video, which should be hopefully rather soon, I'm the Theorizer.